Manchester United, no doubt, have one of the best and most iconic youth academies in the world. Producing fresh new talents year on year at such a rapid rate, they actually hold an unbelievable, uncontested record lasting 82 years. They've named a youth academy graduate in every starting 11 since 1938. That is over 4,000 games in a row. That is just truly remarkable, to say the least. Not to forget their fair share of flops and club failures over the years, but we'll move on. So what if we lived in a world where clubs were only allowed to use the Wonder Kids produced from their youth academy. No transfers allowed, just relying on the homegrown talent. Today, we're finding out what if Manchester United only had their youth academy players? How would they perform? How many trophies could they win? And can they be able to live up to the success of the name Manchester United? Can they continue on the youth academy success legacy? We're going to find all that out and more. Let's get straight into it. All right, now before we dive into the United youth academy only, squad make sure if you're going to enjoy the video slap it a like down below hit subscribe turn on those notifications for more fifa 20 career mode content comment down below if i've actually missed anyone in this squad i'm sure i have there are bloody thousands of united youth academy graduates and make sure to let me know who should be next in this experiment type video i'm really looking forward to making this a regular series occurrence on the channel and this team obviously excludes the likes of retired ex former stars for example ryan Gig. Poor skulls and the likes, the class of 92 basically. We're not including icon cards in this experiment, but let me know if we should in the future. I'm thinking of shaking a few things up. Forget the class of 92, can Manchester United find their new class of 2020? This is how United would be shaping up if they only could use their youth academy talent, their graduates over the years. And of course, if you graduate from the United Academy, it is quite prestigious. It is a big moment in your career, but not necessarily all of these players are going to be world beaters. We're going to get into a few blasts from the past, so prepare yourself. In total, in combination with the players we have on loan out as well, we have 36 players in this squad, 4 goalkeepers, 12 defenders, 15 midfielders, and 5 attackers. Alright, so starting off in goal is Tom Heaton. He is now out at Aston Villa in the Premier League. Still a decent level keeper, but nothing like a David De Gea in net. He is aging at 33. We have the Irishman Kieran O'Hara out on loan at Burton. In the Championship, we have Joel Pereira, the Portuguese youngster who seems like he's been at Manchester United for quite a while now. As we move down to Dean Henderson, he's currently out on loan at Sheffield United in the Premier League. He's been having a wonderful season alongside the left back Brandon Williams. He's bursted into the United starting 11. He's been having a breakout year, winning the fans over and the Cameron Borthwick Jackson it just reminds me of the Van Gaal era at United. He's currently out on loan at Oldham Athletic. The centre back duo will consist of Johnny Evans who's currently at Leicester City right now and Michael Keane. If that doesn't scream out a solid defensive back line. I don't know what will. Working our way down now, we have Axel Tuanzebe at right back. We have George Tanner, who's currently out on loan at Salford City. Raphael and his brother Fabio do return to this squad alongside Ethan Laird, an up-and-coming English right back who has just recently signed a contract extending his time at United. Timothy Fosu-Mensa, the Dutchman, still coming up in the United squad. Not too sure if he has a future. Anyways, he's still there at United. James Garner, another up-and-coming youngster from the past two seasons or so. Dwight McNeil is actually killing it at Burnley. I don't know what United were thinking selling this guy, but hey, he has really taken the Premier League by storm. The Clarets are absolutely loving him over there. He's showing great potential as well, so all the power to him. He is tearing it up alongside Tahith Chong. There are rumours of United selling the Dutchman, but for now, he is staying here at Old Trafford, and that massive afro is definitely going to help us out. Another man at Bournemouth is Robbie Brady, Ireland's pride and joy. Just an average, mediocre type player that won't really help us out to the extent that the likes of Marcus Rashford will. It was actually the four-year anniversary just a few days ago of him coming on in the Europa League all those years ago, scoring against Michelin and getting United through to the next round. He burst onto the scene and the rest is history. He is one of our best players. Marcus Rashford has a ginormous future ahead of him. One of the stories of a successful United Youth Academy graduate as we move over in contrast to Tom Cleverley. He was piped up to be an amazing player, obviously an English midfielder at United, getting game time and yeah it all just came crashing down I guess. Currently playing his trade at Watford in the Premier League he is still going strong at 29 years of age. Dean Levitt though is a Welshman another midfielder and he will be in this squad another one that is on the rise in 2020. You've got to watch out for him. And this man Danny Drinkwater. How Chelsea paid £40 million for this man I do not know. Literally ever since he won the title with Leicester in 2016 he has been a shadow of himself. Nonetheless the less said about that the better. We'll move on 
on to the one, the only, Paul Pogba. He will be the captain for this squad. And I know there's currently controversy surrounding him at the moment at the club. He's been used as a bit of a scapegoat. Been injured for quite a bit of period of time. He hasn't really been involved this season. But he did graduate from the United Youth Academy. He did win that famous FA Cup Youth Trophy. And yes, he definitely qualifies for this team. And we definitely need to keep him because he's one of the best players here. As we delve into Scott McTominay, the Scottish midfielder who's been really breaking out this season and especially last season he has been really involved in the starting 11. Two Scottish players in a row we have Ethan Hamilton out alone at Bolton we have Andreas Pereira who's been getting a bit of stick this season the Brazilian unfortunately just divides opinion he's just a player people love to hate for some reason. Anyways moving on we do have another one of the famous ones Ravel Morrison. Apparently quoted by Sir Alex Ferguson he was one of the best youth players he ever saw at Manchester United and what happened to him. He moved back to the Premier League this year at Sheffield United and now he is over in Middlesbrough after a January move. He has been to about 10, 20 clubs. I've lost count. Still at only 26 years of age, he should be in the peak of his powers right now, the prime of his career, and he's rotting away in the championship, nowhere near the level he needs to be. F's in the chat, boys, as we move along to Angel Gomez, another up-and-coming star who's been on the rise for a few years now. Him and Taith Chong have currently been on the same path, growing together and showing their worth, coming on here and there. Ah, this man, Jesse Lingard. Where do we even begin? Bees, bees, bees. I think the less said about him, the better. He's pretty much been turned into a meme at this point, and I think... I've, I could probably say every single joke under the sun about him, but we're just going to leave him at that. Lingard, you've been let off, son. Count your lucky stars. On to the last four players in the United Youth Academy right now, and we do have the Belgian Adnan Yanizai. I've got to admit, probably one of the most hyped up wonder kids of the decade. The Belgian was on everyone's lips. Countries were fighting over his nationality. That's how much of a stir he was causing. Yanizai was all the rage back in the day, and I absolutely got behind the hype train. I'm not going to lie. Unsuccessful loan spells out to Sunderland, Borussia Dortmund, and now he's currently at a Real Sociedad. He has seemed to revive his career over there alongside a bunch of other wonder kids, and yeah, I don't really see a day where it comes back to Manchester United, but hey, we're living in the world where the Youth Academy graduates return into Old Trafford. Oh my, how, how do we come to this? How did we come to this? Joshua King linked with a move to Manchester United in January after they were searching for a striker. The Norwegian currently out at Bournemouth and never thought he'd see the day where he'd return. But hey, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer really wanted his signature. For one reason or another, the move didn't pull through. And that could have been a really weird turn of events. He will be one of our attacking threats alongside the last two, which I do want to compare. Mason Greenwood and Danny Welbeck. Now, I don't know why I want to compare these two whatsoever, but it seems like Greenwood's in this kind of similar position that Danny Welbeck was. All those years ago, back in 2011, 2012, 2013, Danny Welbeck was an up-and-coming English striker at United. He was scoring actually decent goals. He fell out of favour, sold and never returned. He couldn't return back to his best form at United. Injuries have gotten to him, and I hope, I pray that that isn't the case for the young Mason Greenwood. Scoring bangers week in, week out. Currently, right now, United saving grace. He's on the same road to the top, road to the same growth and development, similar to Marcus Rashford, so I hope he stays on that path. And right, now that we've all covered him, this is how the squad will be lining up. We've got the 4-2-3-1 formation. King is going to be the main man leading the line. We have Lingard right at that number 10 spot. He's going to be in the hole. Scott McTominay and Paul Pogba are the midfield partnership. Marcus Rashford has to be shifted out to the left-hand side, playing at left mid. And Adnan Yanuzai returns as the Belgian is going to be starting in at right mid. The menacing back four of Raphael, Johnny Evans, Michael Keane and Brandon Williams. We also have Tom Heaton in goal. I'm pretty sure Dean Henderson will be taking over him in seasons to come, but that is how we're lining him up for now. I don't really have any expectations for this side. I think they can finish mid-table. I don't know whether we can win any silverware, but it'll be interesting to see how the team grows, develops. And we aren't allowed any transfers. This is going to be a straight up simulation. Youth Academy players to the rescue. Can they do the job? We're going to have to find out. Is United Youth Academy be good enough to survive the Premier League. Who knows? We're about to find out thanks to FIFA 20 career mode. Bring it on. Here we are at the end of the first season and they've performed pretty much to the standard that I set them at. Mid-table they finished just in the bottom half in 11. They couldn't crack the top 10 and it's Newcastle, Everton, Wolves to finish above them. They finished with 48 points losing 18 games, 6 draws and 14 wins. And it was a three-way title race with Liverpool, Man City and Spurs being involved. Chelsea and Arsenal do end up the top 5. 
five. Well, I credit them. They nearly had a successful cup run. They made it all the way to the semi-finals, only to get knocked out by Arsenal 2-0 at Wembley. In contrast to the FA Cup, though, the Carabao Cup saw an early elimination 2-0 to the Bluebirds of Cardiff. I don't think Europe would have treated them any better, to be fair, as we finish off the Europa League Group L, somehow finishing in second place. AZ Alkmaar finish on top. And in the round of 64, the round of 32, I should say, they won 5-1 against Salzburg. Okay, did not expect that coming. They won 4-2 against Sporting Lisbon. Interesting. And then they did end up losing 4-2 to Roma on aggregate in the quarterfinals. So fair play. They made it further than I predicted. The Red Devils Youth Academy seems to have prospered in the Europa League. What really intrigues me, who are going to be the top performers? I'm assuming Pogba, maybe Rashford, and we are pretty much bang on. Josh King as well finishing in the top two performers. It was Paul Pogba with a whopping 30 goal contribution, 17 goals and 13 assists from midfield. The captain performing, putting in that work. Joshua King outscoring Marcus Rashford, 14 goals and three assists for the Norwegian. And at left mid, Marcus Rashford ended up netting 13 times with three assists to his name. Danny Welbeck off the bench seemed to have had an impact with nine goals. And Scott McTominay, Paul Pogba's midfield partner, five goals and seven assists. He does get a lot of stick in real life alongside Lingard, but Andres Pereira managed to get four goals and three assists. And hey, Lingard, in other simulations I've done, he has really replicated the form he's had in real life. No goals, no assists. But in this one, he's had three goals and four assists. So he's moving forward in his career. He's making strides and I'm proud of him. Mason Greenwood, on the other hand, though, I knew it would take a bit of time for him to really make an impact for United at this rate. Mason Greenwood only bagging one goal. And then Yanisai not really performing all too well. One goal and one assist in 26 appearances. Was low-key expecting better from Dwight McNeil, but I assume that he will get better as time progresses. And it's Dean Henderson already taking over the reins at that number one position. In between the sticks, he managed to get nine clean sheets alongside a little cameo from Tom Heaton, the now 34-year-old with five clean sheets. I think we all knew coming into this, there wasn't going to be a similar success that United have had in the past with this team at the helm. However, they've done much better than we've anticipated. We're waiting for young players to grow and develop into first team starters. But I think brighter futures are on the horizon. Let's get simulating and let's see what happens in season two. Okay, what have we got here? Season 2, what are you saying? Ninth position for Manchester United. It is improvement. It's subtle improvement. They finished above Arsenal. And they finished well above Arsenal. 11 points over the Gunners. That is humiliating for them, surely. And now we're going to take a look at the top. It is Liverpool taking it out. Spurs, Man City, and Leicester are in the top four. Okay, interesting there. But, okay, the Red, the Red Devils have improved. Like I said, they've... I've got a few youngsters that have grown and developed, and I'm sure they've had some outstanding performances throughout the campaign. Still no European football to report on, but hey, that it was always going to be a pipe dream. And in the FA Cup, they reached the semi-finals again. 2-1 elimination to Spurs at Wembley. That's got to be heartbreaking. They wanted to lose the final, though. Carabao Cup, we all know how poorly we did last season. It was a major improvement, and they only got knocked out to Manchester City 1-0. Don't get me wrong, they have improved, but without European competition in the mix, they weren't able to battle on multiple fronts that could focus more domestically and that's probably one of the reasons behind more of their success. Not to take anything away from them, I think they've performed admirably and if right now, right here's the season of Mason Greenwood, 34 appearances, 12 goals and 3 assists. He is our top goal scorer and it was only a matter of time before the young teenager was able to shine here at Old Trafford and we have Adnan Yanuzai really improving on his bit of a dud season last year. The only player to achieve double figures, 11 goals and 10 assists, 37 appearances, Jesse Lingard is breaking away from that mold and he is really starting to prove that he has been hiding something all these years. 10 goals and 8 assists. He is really starting to come out of his shell now and Joshua King. 9 goals and 3 assists. Marcus Rashford with a bit of a lackluster season. In contrast to his lofty standards, you'd expect a bit more from him. I'm putting the pressure. A lot of pressure is lying on his shoulders and he is carrying this team, especially in Season 1. Danny Welbeck nearly outscoring him with 6 goals and 2 assists. Andres Pereira, 10 goal contributions. Dwight McNeil now entering the 80s. He had nine goal contributions, six goals and three assists. Scott McTominay from midfield, four goals and two. And I'm surprised we haven't seen a certain someone. It is Paul Pogba with two goals and five assists. The captain not really living up to the season one he had. A very much disappointing season for the now 28-year-old Frenchman. He's in his prime and he should be running that midfield. Dean Henderson, the main man in between the sticks. Five clean sheets for him in 33 appearances. But Tom Heaton now 35. He's still getting a run in four clean sheets in 16. And we've actually fixed a few things up in this starting 11. We've got Rashford up top. We have Dwight McNeil starting on the left. Axel Tuanzebe comes in to partner up Keane at centre-back. And we do have Dean Henderson solidified as our number one moving into season 
3. We've come to the conclusion that at the end of Season 3, the main theme throughout all of this is slow and steady progression. Every single season that they've improved in terms of the league standings, they now sit in 8th, 53 points. And yes, I know they're nowhere near the top 5. They are many, many points away from cracking the top 4. But hey, that is a marvelous achievement. Considering the Premier League is one of the toughest leagues in the world, that is a pretty decent finish as we finish off in the FA Cup. They get eliminated in round 6, 2-1 to Liverpool. They ended up taking out the title. And in the Carabao Cup, it was Liverpool to take out that trophy. Where did United get knocked out? Yeah, you guessed it, to Liverpool again. They're really giving us hell, but a 1-0 elimination saw us get eliminated in round 4. And unfortunately, there was no return to European competition, neither the Europa League or the Champions League for the Manchester United Youth Academy only squad. And as we review our season, the star performers, it really is the same old story here. Marcus Rashford returning on top with 16 goals. He is our top goal scorer, also getting 5 assists. Mason Greenwood, he's understudy, if you will, 14 goals and 5 assists, so only 2 goals short of Rashford's 16. Danny Welbeck has really been a surprise package. The Englishman's return to Old Trafford has sprung out the best in him, and he has managed to get 10 goals and 4 assists. Andreas Pereira has also had little consistent seasons. He's really built on his form alongside Jesse Lingard, who, of course, like I said earlier, do get a lot of hate in real life, but in this experiment, they've proven to be quite decent. Scott McTominay and Paul Pogba, the midfield partnership, you can't get much better than that. Scott McTominay now at 86. Danny Drinkwater also had a bit to say in there with two goals in 12 appearances, the now 32-year-old Englishman. And the Belgian Yanazai back to his mediocre and underwhelming best. 18 appearances, only one goal and one assist. Season 1's nightmares have returned, and it is Dean Henderson, 46 appearances, only eight clean sheets, but I don't blame him. He has had a pretty lackluster defense in front of him. So the Englishman, he's probably been faced with thousands of shots throughout this season. And it looks like the board have absolutely torn this project to shreds whilst we were simulating Dwight McNeil headed off to Ajax for 22 million pounds. Dean Henderson is heading off to Real Madrid on a free alongside Danny Drinkwater is headed off to Brentford and we are losing key players here. Taith Chong also pushed for a move away to China and I did not expect that. I did not see it coming and the Dutchman has been poached. Some of our big players were stripped from us like Dwight McNeil and that was quite surprising in all honesty. But nevertheless, here we are at the end of the day. That is season three. I guess we can say now, if United did have to rely on the Youth Academy, they wouldn't be in too much of a bad spot. With the likes of Rashford, Pogba, McTominay, Yanuzai even really carrying this squad alongside our pretty shaky backline. We all knew the problem areas in this team. There were always going to be hurdles to jump over and those hurdles just seemed a bit too much for Manchester United and their Youth Academy. Guys, if you did go ahead and enjoy this one, make sure to comment down below who should be next in the Youth Academy only experiment. Take the time out. If you're new around here, hit subscribe, turn on those notifications, follow me on Twitter. The link will be in the description. There is plenty more FIFA 20 content to be coming to the channel. Don't you worry about that. I've been your boy BCHD. Hopefully you did enjoy it. Have a wonderful day and I'll catch you all in the very next video.